Hi, everybody. It's Talk To Me Tuesdays. It's your girl, Anja, and I'm here with professional overseas basketball player. Wait, no, 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 no. He's an <laughs> international pop star. Wait, <laughs> hold on. He's actually an actor on BET and Geico commercials. Okay, I think he's really the jack of all trades. So please, everybody, help me welcome my guy, Bakari Copeland. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for having me. How are you? I'm good. Can't complain. How are you doing? I'm great. I'm so glad I was able to catch you because you are clearly a busy human being. <laughs> so I can talk about a lot of things, but I think for this episode, I really want to talk about how you turned yourself into an international pop star during basketball season. So I know firsthand what it's like to be like an overseas basketball player and like the grind of it. But for people who don't know, let's just start there. What is it like being a professional basketball player overseas? So, I mean, it's definitely different than being in America. For one, depending on the country that you're in, it's not for sure that they're going to speak English. But lucky for me, most of the places that I was in, they spoke English. Um, prayerfully, you pray that you have another American on the team to have somebody else to bond with. So that makes it much easier, but it's just really like a big adjustment. You're dealing with a whole different country, being away from your family for like eight to 10 months at a time, um, different culture. And just being away probably is the hardest part for me because I'm I'm a big family person. So when I'm away from my family, like I don't feel like I'm, I'm at home for it, but just adjusting to the different culture is probably the biggest thing though. So what's your schedule look like? Is it kind of like you're on vacation or is it, what's it like? See, see, this is the thing. A lot of people think that being overseas is like a big vacation. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad you asked that because I just want to clear the air that it's not. Normally we wake up um, probably like, we'll probably have the first workout like lifting weights at nine o'clock. Then we'll have what they call an individual workout like 12. And then where I was at this past year, we had practice at nine o'clock at night. So we'll do the two workouts like nine and 12 and then we'll, have the whole day and then at nine o'clock at night we got practice for two hours which, which is crazy to me oh uh, yeah that's a little crazy. the whole day and it's just in the way so really we're doing like three things a day and then on top of that i'm like five hours ahead of america so really when i'm done with my day here really i want to go to sleep but i still got to catch up with everybody in america so it's normally a tough day so what country were you in when you decided that you were going to live out two dreams at the same time. <laughs> yes. So I was in um, Portugal. Um, the specific place where I was at was called Madeira Island. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I really started making music. I always been like a melodic person, but I started making music like 2019, around the 20, like early 2019. And then I went to Portugal in September of 2019. Mm -hmm. Really, I just, I just can't do one thing. Like, I just don't feel right just being alive and only doing one thing. So when I went over to Madeira, that schedule was different because we'll practice at nine and we'll have practice at like three. And after that, we'll have the rest of the day. So I'm just like, I can't just like do that and just be boy here. So I'm like, you know what? I make music. Why don't I just try to see what kind of my music out here? Because I make like pop music um, for their culture that I know they'll like. And I had made some songs for them prior to me going over there. So I'm like, I'm really going to just try to push it out. So um, I, I think in October it was, I told myself, I'm just going to DM every radio station. I'm gonna Wait, hold on. Club. Did you already play in that country before? So you already knew? No, that was my first year playing there. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I found out I was going there in August. And mm -hmm. then I ended up going in September. And All right, then bet. I, by October, I was already hitting up everybody. I DM every club out there, every radio station, every DJ. And I just said, I'm just going to see, I'm just going to see what will happen. So how is the making the music process? You made that while you're stateside? Yeah, so I um, started in February when I made my first song. And um, I really had a lot of songs that I, I'd already made, but I just never recorded them. Mm -hmm. so I just started recording them. I'm just, I'm just like, really, I was making it for myself. Then I let some of my friends here, and they were like, like, it's actually fire. And my friends, I got the type of friends, they're not going to tell me it's fire just because they're my friend. Like, they're not going to let, they're not going to allow me to put out no, no BS. So I knew it was <laughs> We need friends like that all the time, right? Right. And then I let my family hear it. 
they loved it and my family here and they love it then i know i like i did something good especially like the like i said the pop music that you can dance to and people mm -hmm. overseas or like that too so <laughs> i said I, I might i might have something so okay so from the outside looking in it looks so easy you were playing basketball you were like talking to radio stations mm -hmm. but was it really that easy was there a lot of no's along the way what was that like Oh no, it was a million no's. So when I started DM people in October, I probably hit up like, as far as DJs, I might have hit like 10 DJs and got like two responses. And even with the two responses, um, one of them kept saying that he was gonna play my song on the radio. And this this was the biggest DJ on the island. So yeah. even though he was even though he was like kind of playing around, but just his response, I knew I did something good. So he was the biggest one on the island. Told me he was going to play it. I'm waiting for him to play it. Never played it. And then another DJ, he was like a local small DJ, but he played on a radio station like prior in the next week. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, not many people heard it, but it's just the acceptance of one person. I know that so it's an uh, audience that I can have out here if, if he wants to allow me to play. So like I said, a lot of DJs said no. I DM every club on the island, and that's like 20 of them. And only one of them got back to me a month later and told me that they want me to send them uh, some more of my music. So I sent it to them, and then I didn't hear from them until, I want to say, like, the end of November. And then the end of November, out of nowhere, that guy from the club, uh, the club name was Copacabana, mm -hmm. and they hit me back and said that they want to, um, I was telling them that I want to perform, and they said they'll let me come in for a tryout. Did they know you played basketball, too? They did, they did, yeah. So people on the island knew me for playing basketball. So okay. when I when I was DMing them, telling them that I made music, I feel like at first they really weren't taking me serious. Yeah, that's what I was gonna ask. You know, Were they like, was, yeah, all right? <laughs> yeah, so they, they really weren't taking me serious. So he, they wanted me to come in for a tryout. I did the tryout. I killed it, and then um, yeah, they said I I can. At first they wanted me to open up for somebody, and I'm like, I'm not about to. I'm not really trying to open up. You know, like <laughs> you're so, like actually my dreams are higher. That's yeah, like funny. open. Like I'm not. I mean, it would have still been cool. It's still something good to do. But I'm like, I'm not trying to open up. You feel me? Because a lot of people on the island, like a lot of the basketball fans that listen to my music, they mm -hmm. were like actually fans of the music too. So I'm like, I'll probably like, I'll have like a sold out show. I feel like there's no <laughs> way all these people are not gonna come to, to the show. So they they said in February I can perform. Hold on, like, hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. So it's my understanding that you never actually really performed as a like international pop star. And you, but you have so much confidence, like mm. and with all the no's and all the like adversity and like people saying they would play your music on the radio and they did it. Where's this confidence come from to be like, nah, I'm not gonna, I'm a headliner. I can sell out. Like, yeah, I mean, I've always been a confident person and I just, I just know my work, you know what I mean? Like, I just don't feel like I'm a, I'm second to anybody with anything that I do. Like, I just, I just know, I just know, like, what I'm capable of. Like, honestly, like, this, this is going to be funny, but all my friends know I'm dead serious. Like, I feel like I'm like a Chris Brown dude. Like, like, don't be trying to belittle me. Like, I'm like, <laughs> I'm the head dude. <laughs> Especially, like, overseas. I feel like I'm, like, I'm that caliber, like, with anything that I actually put my, time and effort too so i'm not gonna settle for anything less you know what i'm saying if i had to do it and i had no other choice i'd do it you know what i mean but I'd you were like nah there's you gonna give me yeah. what i'm asking for right like i would have been appreciative of, of any opportunity but i'm gonna fight for what i want to do first and then oh, if I you say that. no I, I, I accept that but so i ended up doing that show in like february and the show was sold out and hold on there you are missing some details <laughs> of this story that i think you need to talk about so oh, basketball's happening there may be a little bit of issues with the team you having a little issues which I think a lot of basketball players and athletes can relate to because you do not always get along with your teammates and coaches right. so there's a little struggle there right and mm. they heard that you're out here trying to be a pop star mm. what did they, they have like to that. say about that <sighs> so when the I'm trying for oh the way they found out so after I had booked the show, like, in November, because I, I wasn't telling them anything about my music. They knew I made music, but I wasn't, like, I tried to really, like, keep them divided because I didn't want them trying to 
use that for anything to say I'm not focused or anything like that. So I never even told them about my music until they heard it. Actually, one of my assistant coaches heard it on the radio first, but he so never really cool. said Yeah, but he never really said nothing about it. Cause I like I said, I don't say nothing about it. But then um out of nowhere, I want to say it was it was the first week of December. Out of nowhere, the club that booked me for February, they took it upon themselves to start promoting it and they put me in the newspaper. And it wasn't even nothing wrong with them putting me in the newspaper, but the picture that they chose for the newspaper was like, y'all really could have chose something else. Y'all could have just asked me for a picture. Where like, did they get that picture from? Because you guys don't know, but I'm definitely going to post the picture because it's lit. <laughs> <laughs> but where did they find that photo of you? They either, got, they either got it from my, my Instagram. I don't, it's, it's not on my Instagram right now, but they either got it from my Instagram or a website where I would post it, like one of my acting websites that I would use for something like that. Yeah. And the picture just me, probably from like mid, like mid stomach section up, shirt off, pose, and I'm just like, y'all, it's not even a bad it's picture. A it's a huge picture too in the, in the uh, newspaper. It's Man, not like what? this little thing. They like, they, they were up, super proud. <laughs> and then um basically the whole article was talking about me performing. So, my coach, my head coach saw that before I even saw it. He actually he's the one that showed it to me. He's they I might I'm coming to practice and they show me the newspaper and they just like you gotta tell us like this, like they were trying to say I blindsided them. And I'm like, I I guess I kind of feel you, but I don't feel like it's a negative thing. Like if anything, for one, it's gonna bring more people to the games, which it True. did. It brought a lot more people to the games. And I'm like, it's not like it's a negative thing that I'm promoting. Like it's not like I'm talking about derogatory things in my in my songs i'm talking about all positive stuff but they wanted to use that as i'm not focused and they were kind of mad that i was trying to do more than just play basketball and i, I told them straight up my day my day here ends at like five o'clock mm -hmm. i have the rest of the day until nine o'clock next morning to do something like i'm not just about to be here doing nothing and they know i'm a versatile person too so the head coach didn't like that and on top of that um the season we weren't we weren't really winning that much. Like I was doing good, but if we're not winning, they're gonna blame the Americans that's on the team. Of course. So you know what I'm saying? They tried to blame me. It was like we had two other Americans too, but they were trying to put it on me just because of that situation. So around December, I really thought I was gonna get sent home. Cause that's normally the time when they send Americans home if y'all not winning. So I thought I was gonna get sent home. But I already had in my head, I already told my mom, my dad, I said, even if they send me home, I'm staying out here until I do that show. Like, I'm not leaving without <laughs> doing that show. Like, I done did everything in my power to book it. I had to audition for it, reach out to everybody. I'll, I'll stay here until I do that show. Like, I don't care about that. I'm not tripping. Right. Then, um, fast forward, they ended up keeping me. Um, I was playing way better, and we were winning. So around February, around the time that I was about to do the show, uh, it was a Saturday. We had just came off a, a loss to another team. And they were saying, um, they tried to bring it up again, saying I wasn't focused, saying I was distracted. I'm like, all right, whatever. So the, the day that I had the show, we had a game. I'm like, no, the day before, no, it was the day of, we had a game. And I'm like, if we don't, if we don't win this game, they're going to try to send me home. But it's too late because I already made it to the show day anyway. So I'm good either way. <laughs> so <laughs> so we had the game. Uh, I played a great game, and we won. Matter of fact, we won because of me that, that day. So now they all happy. They talking about they coming to the show, all this other stuff. You know the teammates so, are like your coaches. The, the coaches. Oh. My, no, my teammates were were happy as, as heck. They were oh, – all, okay. all of them showed up to the show. They were excited. They they knew it was a good thing, but it was just the coaches that were doing the most. Now the coaches talking about they want to come to the show and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, all right, whatever. So I ended up doing the show. And like I said, it was sold out. It was crazy. Okay, was so nervous. what did you wear for the show? Like, what was your, what were you what gonna wear? wear? What's your plan? So you played a whole game of basketball, and then that yeah. night you did the show. Yeah, the, my my basketball game is probably like three o'clock. The show, I want to say I got on stage around 10, 10 p.m. And I bought a um, what did I have on? My pants were a uh, black pyramid, Chris Brown clothing line. Yeah. So I had to wear I had to wear the Chris Brown stuff. Then I had to um I bought like some some overseas like light up gray jacket. It, it was like some some weird looking jacket. Like when the light hit it, it like 
a reflector kind of looking oh, okay. right yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of thing. So it looked good on stage. I shouldn't have wore that because I was hot as hell. It was hot as hell in there. I was sweating bullets the whole time. But it looked good, though. So you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you did. You did. <laughs> so, yeah, that was cool. And then the, the crowd was real, like, acceptable of my music. Like, that's how I knew that, that the music was good. Because, for one, I just feel like in Atlanta, if they know you for one thing, which mm-hmm. for me is basketball, they're not going to try to accept me being an actor or me doing music. You know what I'm saying? Because right. they see me as just a basketball player. That's what they saw me my whole life. But over there, they know I hoop, but they don't know me outside. Like, they don't know me for one thing type thing. And they really accepted the music, and that's why I knew it was good. I love that. Mm-hmm. So, you are, you came, you did basketball. You had one of your best games of the season. And mm-hmm. then you did the show. How, like, how did that make you feel <laughs> that you were literally accomplishing two major things? at one time in one day were you like overwhelmed were you excited did it not hit you until the next day tell me about it i'll probably say it was definitely overwhelming just because i don't know I, i'm a pisces so i be getting emotional off some little stuff so like <laughs> after the show i'm just like i just felt good that i i did something that i that i said i was going to do mm-hmm. right and that, that right there that's like the biggest accomplishment for me like if, if nothing else came from that, I was just happy that I was able to do something that I came in with the mindset of doing and just knowing I did it. So that was probably the best feeling. Um, glad I had it recorded so my family at home could watch because my mom was, um, she was like really helping me stay confident about it when I was hearing all the no's. Because no, I really talked to my mom the most about like my entertainment stuff. My dad is like, man, for the basketball Stuff yeah. like that, and my mom's been for the entertainment, so my mom's really keeping my head up um, along the whole process. So it just made me feel good that I was able to, that I was really able to do it, and it gave me a lot more confidence moving forward because I was already confident. But when you actually do something on top of that, like behind it, it just it boosts my confidence all the way through. The room. So those are you would say the two people who keep you grounded and keep you solid and on the right path and motivate you to like keep going is mom and dad. Dad for basketball and mom for the arts. Yeah, those two along with my older sister. My older sister, she really plays. So my dad, they all play, like, kind of the same role. But as far as, like, basketball is mainly my dad, entertainment, really my mom. And as far as, like, life, like, life in general, like, just dealing with things in life, that's really my sister. But my mom and dad can also help me with that, too. But my sister mainly, she helps me with, like, talking about relationships and just talking about just life things in general. So it's like, I got like three three people who I can go to for any situation type thing. That's top notch. Mm-hmm. So another question I have is, like I said, I think something that is really cool about you is people can meet you and not even know how great you are. Like you don't <laughs> even bother to give your whole resume, which I think that speaks volume. Cause I think when you're really out here living your best life, you don't have to explain it to anybody. Mm-hmm. so but you are pretty cool in so many different aspects do you Thank ever you. get you have haters you got groupies you got haters uh i mean i try not to acknowledge people that hate but it, it's definitely a lot of it, i mean i feel like anytime you do something good it, it comes with haters but i'm good at like seeking it out and just removing myself from it because i don't even want to be around that kind of energy and the the friends that i have um, I don't have too many people that I can really call a friend. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I choose my friends and my the people I call like my brothers. Like I choose those real specifically, so I don't even keep negative energy around. I'm not even worry about them. And I feel like if if any if it's anybody hating that, I mean, I'm definitely doing something good because you ain't gonna hate on nobody for no reason. So that's true. So would you say you are able to like cut people off? Like as soon as you meet them and they got weird vibes, are you able to just like cut them off pretty quickly then? Since oh no, you, for sure. I, okay. I, I do that. I, I do that in a heartbeat. Like I said, I don't keep no bad energy around. No, no bad spirit. I don't want. It, I don't want none of that around. Me. And I actually had to change, kind of change my friend group, probably like a couple years ago. Once I started dipping and dabbing in other stuff, I, because I just knew certain people <clears throat> just couldn't be around in the future when things really take off. And like, you know what I'm saying? I feel like, I feel like your friend group really. Or the people you have around you in general are really gonna make or break your career because you you have that energy around you twenty four seven. So, you know what I'm saying I, cl- I definitely cleaned up my group for sure, and I don't hang with too many people. I really hang around family, and maybe like 
three or four like friends for real. Was that a clean break or was it like a process for you to be able to look at your friend group and realize that this isn't this isn't gonna work? Some of these relationships aren't gonna work. Was it a clean break or was it like kind of like a little bit of a heartbreak? Like, huh? You can't I must say more me. of a heartbreak, more of a heartbreak more than anything, because I a lot of the friendships were like kind of kind of like lifelong friendships in a way. But I just knew like and I was always trying to hold on to certain friendships because um you know what I'm saying? I just want to keep people around, you know what I'm saying? Especially when you when you have love for people. But mm-hmm. after a certain amount of time, you just realize, like, all right, obviously, it ain't meant to be no more. You know what I'm saying? Everything everything is seasonal. You know what I'm saying? Even though you want to keep friends along for the long run, but some people you just can't have around. People change. And, you know what I'm saying? People change for the better. And sometimes you just outgrow each other. But that don't have to be a negative thing. You just, you know what I'm saying? You just can't hang with certain people no more for your own progression. I definitely agree with you on that. Mm-hmm. Um, so one thing that always comes up with you, and I think you have it tattooed somewhere on your body, it's your quote. It's your famous quote. So like, let me not murder it. It's like, denial is not... <laughs> you uh, already messed it up. <laughs> <laughs> delay is not denial. Okay, say it again, because you know I... You, okay, go ahead. Yeah, it's like delay your, is not... Like your quote. De- <laughs> delay is not denial, and that means... The blessings in life are never a day overdue. So just because what we want to happen in life doesn't happen on our own time doesn't mean it's not bound to come in the future. And like everything's on God's time. I love that. That's mm-hmm. pretty deep. So for anybody who wants to either grow up to be a basketball player or an international pop star or do both at the same dang time, what mm-hmm. little gym would you give them? What advice? I'll definitely say um, be versatile, be open to multiple, multiple to doing multiple things at one time. Uh, always be yourself. I never, because if that's really like a big thing, like always be yourself, like never change for anybody. Because if I ne- if I wasn't trying to be the outgoing person that I that I truly am, I think I would have missed out on a lot of opportunities just trying to be something that I'm not. And I would definitely say. Um, Easier said than done, but be patient. Because, honestly, be patient because you never know when, like, when your opportunity, when your turn is going to come. You know what I'm saying? But always stay ready. Uh, definitely have a hard work ethic, but always stay ready because you never know. Like, you literally never know when the opportunity is going to come. So I think that's like a perfect little gym. And one more thing that I will say about you is the way that you live your life, I think allows other people to understand that they can go after all of their dreams and all of Mm -hmm. their passions and they really don't have to just be a basketball player or a dancer that you can really be many things so Mm -hmm. I would like to say thank you for that because you're like a good reminder that um I think there's a false sense that like if you are doing all these things you're unfocused which is kind of what your coach coaches we're saying mm. to you is like you're not focused right. on basketball you can't be taking it seriously but i think that is far from the truth mm-hmm. so i, I think your that. life is such a good reminder of that <laughs> thank you you're welcome okay so you guys have been watching talk to me tuesdays he is amazing and he is all over social media so can you <laughs> plug yourself because i'm gonna do it wrong so go ahead and let these people know where they can find you so on Instagram, it's B-Cope, D-I-N-D, B-C-O-P-E-D-I-N-D. The same on TikTok. Twitter, I'm not on Twitter that much, but I kind of am. B underscore Cope underscore 21. Um, Facebook, you can find me on, under my name, Bakari Copeland. Oh, my YouTube that I kind of just started in December. Um, I do like daily vlogs when I'm overseas, vlogging my overseas life, giving tips on... Um, basketball, acting, how I book certain roles and how I got certain auditions, stuff like that. So on YouTube is Cope TV. Um, I think that's all the social media platforms that I know. <laughs> okay, I'll make sure to put all that in the bio as well. All right, so like I said, once again, you guys have been watching Talk To Me Tuesday. It's your girl, Anja. You can follow me at it's your girl underscore Anja. Once again, it's your girl underscore A-N-J-A. And until next Tuesday... We'll see you back here. Like and subscribe wherever you find that link. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome.